Welcome to our soil testing video series jointly presented by the Geotechnical Division of the HAIE and the Geotechnical Engineering Office of the CEDD. The production of this series is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors. In this video, we are going to explore the interpretation of the results of triaxial test Rotini carried out. Three types of triaxial test are covered in Geospec 3, namely the unconsolidated and drained UU test, consolidated and drained CU test, and consolidated drained CD test. In video 8A, we have presented the components of a conventional triaxial apparatus. The process of preparing triaxial test specimens from soil samples and the key test procedures. We will now present the interpretation of the different types of test results. Triaxial test can be used to determine the shear strength and stiffness of a soil. Depending on the type of test, control of specimen drainage and the measurement of pore water pressures may be carried out, and the total stress or effective stress parameters can be obtained from the test results. The UU test is mainly used to obtain the undrained shear strength CU of a soil. There is no consolidation of the soil specimen before shearing, and water inflow and outflow are not allowed. Hence, it is a quick test. The CU and CD test are mainly used to determine the effective shear strength parameters of a soil. In particular, the CD test can provide information on volume change of the soil specimen during shearing and the dilation angle for a dense soil under normal confining pressure. On the other hand, the CU test does not allow volume change but can give information on the excess pore water pressure development during shearing of the soil specimen. An advantage of the CU test is that multi-stage shearing can be carried out on the soil specimen. In a multi-stage test, the soil specimen will undergo three stages of shearing under three different confining pressures. So, it can provide three data points from one specimen for determination of its shear strength parameters. The use of the same soil specimen can theoretically eliminate specimen variations that could be present if specimens are prepared from samples taken from different boreholes or from different depths in a borehole. However, a multi-stage triaxial test has its drawbacks. In the first and second shearing stage, the test is stopped after the peak deviated stress or peak stress ratio is reached before shearing in the next stage. The specimen will have undergone partial failure at such a state. This process may weaken the specimen and affect its shear strength at the subsequent stages. Whether to do multi-stage test or not depends on the purposes of the test and whether enough soil samples have been collected for single-stage test. The next question you may ask is how to specify the confining pressures to be applied to the specimens in triaxial tests. An important consideration is that the confining pressures should be relevant to the engineering problem in hand, in particular, the relevant stress range. It is because the wrong choice can lead to test results that could affect the determination of soil shear strength for analysis. Figure 3 of GeoGuide 1 shows the actual mole column failure envelope under different stress ranges. As you can see, the best fit line for the failure envelope for the larger range 2 can be very different from that for the small stress range 1. The latter has a smaller apparent cohesion but a larger angle of shear resistance. Therefore, it is important to specify appropriate confining pressures to be applied to the triaxial specimens. Let's use the slope stability assessment problem shown here as an example. This figure shows the critical slope section for a slope. The maximum slope height is 8 meters. If the bulk unit weight of a soil is 20 kN per cubic meter, the maximum normal effective stress acting on the slip surface must not exceed 160 kPa as shown here. Triaxial test results obtained using confining pressures larger than such maximum values will not be appropriate for use in determining the soil shear strength parameters C- and Phi- for slope stability assessment. 
The above approach for assessing the maximum confining pressure to be specified for triaxial tests could be applied to other geotechnical problems in the estimation of appropriate stress range for the project. Examples include design of retaining wall, basement excavation, pile founded in soil, and reclamation. It is worth noting that triaxial tests under a high confining pressure will be useful for determining the critical state strength of a soil. A high confining pressure will suppress the dilation of the triaxial specimen and allow determination of the soil's critical state angle of friction, which is theoretically independent of stress level. Now, let's talk about how to interpret the UU test result. This plot shows the UU test result for a clay specimen. The peak deviator stress is 20.6 kPa and the confining pressure is 60 kPa. We can plot the Mohr circle for this stress state and obtain the specimen's undrained shear strength, Cu, by drawing a horizontal line with the undrained angle of shear resistance, phi u, equal to zero. The Cu value is equal to half of the diameter of the Mohr circle, which is also one half of the peak deviated stress. In practice, several UU tests are conducted on specimens prepared from soil samples with similar void ratios or moisture contents and subject to different confining pressures. Assuming the soil specimens are fully saturated, a number of more circles of similar sizes can be obtained from these tests. We may then select a suitable CU value for design, taking into account possible sample variations. It should be noted that there are limitations in the UU test. Firstly, the soil may have disturbance due to poor sampling, storage, handling, and specimen preparation, which will change its moisture content and effective stress, hence its shear strength. Secondly, the soil may not be 100% saturated, and in the UU test, there is no checking on the specimen saturation. A large cell pressure can be applied to increase the specimen's degree of saturation by reducing its air void content. However, the subsequent reduction in void ratio of the specimen will increase the CU value. As the CU value obtained may not truly reflect the soil's in situ undrained shear strength due to the test limitations, you are advised to carry out other tests such as the field or the lab vent shear test to supplement the result of the UU test. It is important to note that the UU test is not suitable to be used for determining the shear strength of saprolytic, residual, and colluvial soils. Let's now have a look at three typical cases of the CU triaxial results. Single stage test on a dense soil, single stage test on a loose soil, and multi stage test on a dense soil. For a single stage CU test on a dense soil, the deviated stress will continue to increase up to the end of the test. The maximum stress ratio could be obtained during the test, while the pore water pressure will first increase sharply and then decrease monotonically throughout the shearing stage. For a single-stage CU test on a loose soil, a peak in the deviated stress will be reached at a relatively small axial strength. Then, there will be a post-peak drop in the deviated stress. The pore water pressure will increase monotonically until the end of the test. For a multi-stage CU test on a dense soil, the soil's shearing behavior is similar to that in a single-stage CU test on the same soil. Local experience indicates that for most of our colluvial and saprolytic soils, the stress ratio will first reach a peak value as compared with the deviated stress in all three stages. Now, let's discuss how the effective stress shear strength parameters can be obtained from the CU test. Assume we have three sets of test results as shown in this table, which are extracted from the relevant graphs. We can compute the corresponding sigma 3 dash and sigma 1 dash as shown. We can now construct three more circles and draw a best fit tangent line from which the C dash and phi dash values can be obtained. Please note that in this example, we have adopted maximum deviated stress as the failure criterion of the soil. We'll come back to the selection of failure criterion later. The above example makes use of three sets of test results only. In practice, it is recommended to obtain more test results in the determination of C- and Phi- through a ST plot. 
the definitions of these two stress path parameters, S dash and T, are given here in terms of sigma 1 dash and sigma 3 dash. In this approach, each set of test results will give a point in the ST plot as shown. The plot here shows 14 test results from which a regression line based on the principle of least squares is drawn. The slope angle and intercept obtained from this plot can then be converted into C dash and phi dash values using the equations as shown. The conversion equations are obtained using simple geometrical consideration. We'll now discuss the two different failure criteria commonly used for the CU test. These are the maximum deviated stress sigma 1 minus sigma 3 MDS criterion and the maximum effective principal stress ratio sigma 1 dash over sigma 3 dash MSR criterion. As shown here, the red line shows the use of maximum deviated stress as the failure criterion. This has a different axial strain level and poor water pressure change value at failure when compared to those numbers at the green line, which shows the use of maximum stress ratio as the failure criterion. Because of these differences, the effective stress shear strain parameters obtained could be different. The two figures as shown here illustrate the possible difference in the interpretation of shear strength parameters based on these two different failure criteria in the CU triaxial test. Both criteria have been accepted for use in practice. Typical CD test result for a dense soil as shown here. A dense soil shows a peak in deviated stress and then exhibits strain softening after the peak is reached. The volume of a dense soil will increase in most of the shearing stage, that is, dilative behavior. On the contrary, the CD test for a loose soil shows a monotonic increase in deviated stress and monotonic decrease in volume upon shearing, that is, contractive behavior. In the CD test, the shape of the deviated stress versus axial strain curve is the same as that of the effective principal stress ratio versus axial strain curve. Therefore, the use of MDS as the failure criterion would yield the same shear strain parameters as the use of MSR. Only single-stage CD test can provide results for more meaningful determination of a soil's shear strength parameters. The stress path of CD test in ST plane is always a straight line. The interpretation of C dash and phi dash values using ST plot is similar to the CU test. We have just shown how C dash and phi dash values may be obtained from a ST plot. In practice. The designer should take into account local experience and the typical values and considerations given in local guidance documents, such as GeoGuide 1, in the selection of design values of soil shear strain. As illustrated in the figure here, a conservative approach is adopted in the selection of the design values of C dash and Phi dash. It may be of interest to note that a soil's shear strength at low stress level is often overestimated in the use of the best fit line approach as shown in this figure. Notwithstanding this, the consequence of overestimation of shear strength at low stress level is not significant in most geontechnical problems. In practice, it is extremely difficult to obtain reliable test data in the low stress range. It is partly due to the accuracy limit of our conventional triaxial equipment and partly due to the dilative behavior of dense soils at low stress level. This wraps up our video on the interpretation of triaxial test results. We hope you have gained invaluable insight in the theories, procedures, and applications of the various triaxial tests. Thank you for watching.